Drop in, gear up, and compete for glory in PUBG Mobile. Fight in explosive 100-man battles to be the last player standing. Experience incredible, realistic graphics and a variety of play modes. Download the official mobile version of Player Unknown's Battlegrounds for free. Go to your Android or iOS app store and type PUBG Mobile. Collect a special reward using the link and promo code provided in the episode description. Play now. Hi, this is Eric Dickerson, NFL Hall of Famer, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from Draft.com Studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, let's go. It's another almost upset in the books, my friends. Each and every week, you can count on it. What? Okay. Just saying. That's for the matchup shows. I said I got I nailed it. Is oh, it, I, 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 which I'm, one was it? It was the Tennessee game. Ah, uh, yeah. It yes. wasn't really an almost. Well, sure. Upset. I get credit thing. if they almost upset or win. That's true. That's or, how I choose to interpret or it. Or crush mm. them. I thought that game line was insane. Six points when we did the matchup show. Dallas favored yeah, by that six. Was, that was cr- uh, a crazy line. Uh, but Amari Cooper, man. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, we'll talk he about him. Game. Moving we'll talk game about lines. him a little bit. Yeah, you're gonna force feed him. But I I saw a, a breakdown by Brian Baldinger. Did you see that? I did not. He showed this single play with the offensive line for Dallas in slow motion, and this was a play where they had their entire line, and it looked like you had blindfolded each lineman <laughs> and told them to randomly block, and they all blocked random people, and nobody blocked the linebacker. So the second that Zeke got the ball, the linebacker was there, and everybody else was busy just doing random things. It was hmm. it was basically just saying, what is happening in Dallas? Well, they did fire their offensive line coach yeah. last week, so maybe they replaced him with nobody who just <laughs> <laughs> go out and block somebody. Well, welcome in to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Andy, Mike, and Jason back again Tuesday, November 6th. Brooks is here. Brooks, how are you doing this fine Morning after your team got eviscerated at home. I'm still doing great. That's How, what's so great about now, you, Brooks. Brooks you are also o- got beat at in our Dynasty League with the second most points in the league this week, which has happened almost every single week. I mean, week. It's, it's unreal. I feel so bad for you, Brooks. I was, you know, touting my own sad stories of having a super team that was struggling to begin the year, but your team in our Dynasty League is just... Are you the high, you're the second highest points scored on the season? He is the highest. Oh, the highest! Oh, fantastic! Congratulations on your sub five hundred so, record. So Brooks is the highest, and he's four and five. He, he's just, I'm the second highest, and I'm six and three. Yeah, you need to up your defense, Brooks. You got to uh, play better yes, defense. The defense. I mean, you're not, of course. You're letting everybody score all over Twist you. Twist in the knife. I'm Ed, glad you're always okay, Brooks. That's fantasy football. That's fantasy football. It's not unfortunately. Fair. Uh, I'm sure it's our fault. Our hope, our advice. It's probably our fault because we beat you. <laughs> that part's true. Yeah. Uh, but we did have the Monday night game last night. We can recap that a little bit. Don't forget to follow us over on Twitter at the FF Ballers, and then uh, YouTube, YouTube.com/slash the Fantasy Footballers. Did you guys hear that they're going to get rid of the like button on Twitter? I've heard it's in the discussions. Mister Jack, Jack yeah. Twitter. That he does what he wants, and I won't like that <laughs> oh <laughs> well he, he says it's because he wants to create more positive interaction and actual discussions yeah he's gonna replace it with an interesting button yes whatever it is Intriguing. i'm gonna get a lot of them <laughs> <laughs> yes you are uh very special. i need them marcus Mariota, 21 for 29 240 and two ran the ball 10 times even though it was only for 32 yards he did run in a touchdown derrick henry was barely on the field Stole a touchdown, but Deion Lewis had a career, or not a career, a season high in yes. touches. Uh, takeaways from both sides of the ball last night. Well, from the from the Tennessee side, and you Doing just okay? mentioned it. <clears throat> not usually. Frogman. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Clear your throat off the microphone. Okay, hold on. You know, hold on. Uh, <laughs> there we go. I don't think the mic picked that up. Don't worry. Um, 
Yeah, no, when it's did the you Dion... take up smoking though. Recently, <laughs> <laughs> it's the Dion Lewis Derrick Henry split that is the most what interesting split? thing. Well, exactly. They 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 said, hey, you know what? D- Dion Lewis is our best running back, and we need to get better as an offense. And we're just going to use him. Derrick Henry is going to become maybe a goal line back, maybe a short. You know, if we need an inch, power it up the middle with the big guy. Otherwise, it was completely Dion Lewis and. Reminds me of Lindale White. You remember him? Oh, yep. yes. Who was actually valuable. Uh, say, uh, he was on Tennessee and watching, was the, only the goal line back. Watching Derrick Henry is it's so painfully frustrating. But does this, does this now say do you have a true asset in Deion Lewis? Because if Deion Lewis is getting this kind of work, 19 carries, he's going to be great. He's a talented running back for fantasy. I but, would I, – look, he's start worthy. Yes. Past couple games has been good. I mean, I'd rather have Deion Lewis than um, Elijah McGuire. Alex sure. Collins? No, give me Collins. Yeah, give me Collins. I I think I would rather have. Well, four for sixty through the air was solid. I mean, Deion Lewis. Uh, Corey Davis six for fifty six didn't score. Should have scored ten targets. This was a better game for Tennessee all the way around. The yeah. offense looked like it could you know do something. And then Zeke on the other side, he fought against. Um, a defensive front focused on him, 17 for 61. Amari Cooper, 5 for 58 and a touchdown. So Zeke did have 4 for 51 through the year. So he, he, oh, they, his, they, the, the design screens to him yeah. this year have been fun. His fantasy day was was fine regardless of the poor rushing output. Yeah, I think owners wanted a little more. Well, they always Bro- want more. Well, he was, no, outside, he was outside the top 12. So I don't right. think that – I mean, Fair. it was okay. It was all right. Yeah, the, right. the Amari Cooper usage was – Expected. You knew he was going to be force fed when they gave up a first round pick for him. Uh, I thought it was okay. The offense is broken. Sure, sure. I mean, well, I every. I mean, even even the Monday night crew got in on the. Hey, uh, Garrett, maybe throw the ball on first and ten just every once in a while. It's terrible. It, it's it's disgusting to watch. Just it, just make sure the defense says. Has to actually think about Look, things. Look, we're, on we're first Cardinals down. fans. We know a thing or two about first, bad offenses. About running up the middle on first down. Yeah, it, the play calling is the biggest issue there. I think more so than Dak's play, more so than talent. Uh, you know, they they have pieces. This team yes. could win. And the, by the way, the coaching change needs to happen immediately. I forgot about for a good part of the game I forgot about how bad the uh announcing was yeah and then I unmuted it <laughs> no I thought oh, no nice. I, I thought it's true it's genuinely true I unmuted it and I go oh yeah it's Monday night I genuinely night. thought that Jason Witten was uh, it, this was by far his best really I, I didn't like like Booger was talking Book, about Jason Witten as though he wasn't there yeah, he would refer to he wouldn't say you. He would refer to him as Jason Witten. So like, <laughs> Jason Witten was missing on this play. Jason Witten, I was like, just aren't you talking? Aren't you next to him? Basically, he's in the in the mobile. Yeah. All right. News and notes. News and notes from around the league. Well, I don't. Would you say the AJ Green news is is panic worthy? Uh, no, no, because it's kind of good news. We, All right. I mean, let's fill people in. Yeah, it's it's. We already knew that he was going to miss some games. The worry was he was going to need foot surgery, maybe miss the rest of the season if if news went sour. And he does not need foot surgery. Still going to miss at least two weeks. So it's. I mean, I don't know. Can you call it good news? Not really, but it could have been much worse. I would call it good news. If, if you have A.J. Green, you saw the alerts coming through. You were in a panic trying to figure out what you were going to do. And if so, he's only going to miss two games, That's you'll not survive. definitive, though. That is not the definitive report. The report is that in two, after a couple of They'll weeks, evaluate. he's going to be reevaluated. And I have some concerns about the long-term health of a guy that's missed prolonged stretches of his career with toe injuries. So, yeah, um, that's fair. Yeah, uh, You know, depending on your situation, I'm not saying you're not going to be able to count on him for the fantasy playoffs. But I made a decision in my dynasty league that I I wasn't sure. And I'd had a lot of injuries. So I moved A.J. Green. Um, we know at least he's going to miss a couple games. This week is a very good on-paper matchup for Andy Dalton and the Cincinnati Bengals. 
if he's missing A.J. Green, but he's at home against New Orleans, are you okay with the other options there? I know we talked about it being a downgrade for the offense, but you do have other weapons. Um, how do you feel about, about A.J. Playing, missing and Andy Dalton, Joe Mixon, and company? I'm still okay playing him. You have uh, their, their first-round pick of John Ross from last year. He's returned to practice. We'll see what he can do. Um, Josh Reynolds, most people probably haven't heard about him, but he was a fourth round pick. He has some juice. Like I don't, I don't think Josh Reynolds is a complete bum. So I'm not, I'm not going to uh, just say, you know, I, I don't want anything to do with uh, with Dalton. Cincinnati. Yeah. Or, I'm sorry, <laughs> Josh Malone is who I was thinking of. Yeah, that makes more sense. Yeah, I was like. It's like, why not Reynolds, but Josh Malone. Josh Malone. Jason? I don't like Andy Dalton, but I, I'm still fine with Boyd and Mixon. His personal issues? <laughs> well, ever since you dressed up as him yeah. on Halloween, he's a soured to me. But no, I <laughs> uh, I think without A.J. Green, they, they will struggle. I, I looked at the matchup and almost made Andy Dalton my Stream. streamer, and I went, yeah, not going to do that. Yeah, I thought about it too, but the upside wasn't there for me without Green. Sure. All right. More. Hey, Hooray! We've officially reached the point where the Le'Veon Bell saga is as annoying or more annoying than the Zeke one last year. Agreed. Lev Bell tweets, farewell, Miami. That's all. And then there's this weirdness. It seems weird at first that Adam Schefter is saying, hey, he doesn't need to come back at all to be a free agent. Everyone was saying, oh, you, he's Le'Veon yeah. Bell has to be here by uh, whatever it is, the, the 10th, in order to accrue free agent status. It's really the exact Nothing has changed. Basically, what it is is he's a, a free agent next year, but he can be franchise tagged. If he doesn't come by then, then they can franchise tag him at the exact same tag cost and that deal they did with this it a whole other time, which and they try to they, trade him. It doesn't seem like they'd want to do that. I wouldn't imagine they would want to do Although that. Although that would be some digging in on both sides. If yeah. they did that, then it's like okay, we'll just take your career away. Yeah, that, year by year. That would be unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, that would be so stupid. That would I mean, would you want to be a free agent and go to Pittsburgh if Pittsburgh was doing something like that? I, I would know. think twice. I would at least yeah. go, ah, if yeah. I'm a superstar. But I mean, well, money talks. If Pittsburgh's giving you the biggest contract, sure. you're gonna go take it. The, the what's interesting is does the player sort of win. I mean, I know he missed an entire season and is going to miss out on a lot of money if he chooses to sit out. But if, if he's the, a, if the Steelers don't re-tag him and now he's just a free agent and gets to go sign a contract, he won. He got exactly what he wanted. Uh yeah. I would agree with that. I would agree with that. And uh they save a lot of money. And right. they have a backup that they just tried out a year early. So yeah. um Geronimo Allison, big news, Packers wide out, may need core muscle surgery. Uh, regardless of whether he does or not, when you listen to their head, Mike McCarthy talk about this injury, he calls it significant, big. He's missing time no matter what. Um, we, you know, Matthew Batts, one of our writers, says it carries a six-week recovery timeline. He might end up on injured reserve. This is going to speak into our waiver show today. Yeah, a big time. Uh, Paul Richardson's going to have surgery on his shoulder and knee. He's going to be oh. out for the rest of the season. The Redskins as a team, yes. were just destroyed this last week. You lost two starters from the offensive line. You lost another lineman in and out during that game. Four of the starters are now gone or, you know, th this is a huge worry. And then you lose you, arguably your number one wide receiver. Oh, wide receiver. I don't know right. if there is a, a clear-cut number one there. But, I mean, it's bad vibes for the injury bug in, in Washington. It's the same exact thing that happened last year. They lost their entire line. This is uh, them and what Los Angeles yes. need to work the on their Chargers. Uh, yeah. conditioning. Uh, Adam Schefter said Sonny Michelle is likely to return on Sunday against the Titans. Here's the thing: I want to talk about Rob Gronkowski because Rob Gronkowski missed the last week. There's a chance he's back, but they have a bye following this week, and so it is to me. The likelihood is that Gronkowski is going to sit another week. Do you guys agree with that? Yes, I do. Unfortunately. It's been a bad year for Rob yes, Gronkowski. Yes, it has. It's been extremely disappointing. Yeah. yeah. And, and look, and so it, we're, a, we're a redraft show, but let's just real quick take a dynasty pause. <laughs> Gronkowski, 
I mean, there was already all these talks of he's going to retire, he's banged up. Uh, the the Patriots, whispers from the bushes at least, were going to trade him away during this offseason. And Gronk said, no, if you trade me, I will retire. So then teams didn't want to trade for him. You have the – is Brady coming back? Is Belichick coming back? What is the actual dynasty value of last – as of last year, Gronk was the number one clear cut number one dynasty tied in. Yeah, I mean I Where I, is he is he even in the top three for you in dynasty terms anymore? I yeah, I said this uh coming into this season, uh, Gronk in Dynasty is it was a must trade. his value was high and and the the timeline left looks so short and you could get a lot for Gronk. Now now it's a little worrisome of, right. of how much you can get, but no, I mean I would I are you, dra- are I you dra- just going to bail out, though? Would you take what you could get for Gronk right now if you had? Yeah, if I could get a decent offer, yeah. I, you I won't would. get a decent dynasty offer for Gronk right now. If you – here's here's how you, might, you get – You might from a team that's trying to win. Yes, if just, you've got just a he's, he's even out right now. I mean, by the time the Fair. trade deadline goes by, you're going to be, what, he'll miss this week, you'll have the bye week, you probably won't be able to get it. I think you're stuck with him, and, he, and I don't think that's a big deal. If I had to project the future for him – and I've, I've got him in my dynasty league. I just made an acquisition of Josh Gordon. I think you get one more year. Okay. I think you're going – that's my, my anticipation is you're going to have another year of Brady. You're going to have another year of Gronk. And I think they actually end up signing Josh Gordon to a one-year deal. Mm. That's my mm. – that's what I believe. So um, we'll see. We, we don't know. But I think you're going to get one more year of that core together. That's what I believe as of right now. Now, whether or not you get enough Gronk, he has to stay healthy. He has to get healthy, but you need to make plans to live without him this week because I don't think he's going to play. Agreed. Put me in, coach. Whole bunch of teams returning from the bye week, the Bengals, Cardinals, Colts, Eagles, Giants, and Jags. Your friendly reminder that those are, um, those are some of the more ignored players on waiver day. Because yes. they don't have a high point total from the week before. People have let them go, and they forget about them. And everybody's reacting to who performed this past weekend. So don't ignore those six teams. Heading into Week 10, the Vikings, Texans, Broncos, and Ravens, they're all on by, and those are some teams and players that you might see hit the waiver wire following uh, when it goes through tomorrow. And those could be players that you could sneak back onto your roster on sure. Thursday. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and get into the wide receivers. I think we are all in agreement that we have the same favorite. Yes. And that uh, is Marquez Valdez-Scantling. Yeah, he, he should be the clear-cut favorite across all positions this week. I you know He is a bona fide wide receiver two or better the rest of season. With the injury to Geronimo Allison, even when Geronimo was out there, we've seen Marquez... Valdez Scantling have fantasy production, but now he's basically the number two wide receiver for Aaron Rodgers. I mean, that is a super valuable since 2011. That's basically been the wide receiver 15, and uh, he's looked great. So it's it's time to I would I would spend up on Valdez Scantling. I, I I usually don't spend more than ten dollars on Fab, but I would I would burn my waiver priority on him. I would I would spend twenty dollars if if you're making a run at a guy like that he's got a hundred yards or a touchdown in each of the past four games I mean, he's been great for fantasy purposes and now he's the guy it, it's the same reason back uh, a few weeks ago when geronimo was actually available on the waiver wire because he had been uh, a little bit banged up it was you got to get geronimo you got to get that wide receiver too from green bay but now it's a new guy so pick him up and when this season started, we knew it would be a sifting process of sorts to figure out the running back and the wide receiver yes. position there. Um, but you got to take advantage of it when you can. Now, Jason, how does your philosophy change with the $10 of fab per wide receiver when you're trying to acquire somebody for the stretch run? I mean, do you adjust that when you think you have the opportunity to go grab a guy that you can start? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm willing to spend up. It, now is the time of year where when we tell you Here's the percentage I would spend, or here's what it, it is. You you have to do the work because the number we're giving is nonsense. Because you've got to look at how much budget is left for your team. They said ten percent. I'm going to bet a right. dollar. Your <laughs> league, um, you know, uh, 
look at your opponents. Who needs a wide receiver? How much fab do they have? Spend a dollar more than they can or, or a dollar less. Are you set for the playoff run? Make sure you don't spend all of it. Save some of your – save – Five dollars of fab for that playoff run, so that you can grab the tight end away from an opponent for a dollar when they're out of fab. Stuff like that, uh, you've got to just use your 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 brain. Use your brain. <laughs> yep, <laughs> solid advice. All right. Use well, fantasy football. Do you use have any? If if Allison's out, do you have any interest in a flyer on Equinemia St. Brown? No, Not a lot of really. four wide sets. You don't think he's going to earn a more significant role? Uh, I mean. He, he might. I mean, he Too played. Deep. He played a a lot of snaps, but you, we've seen that Rodgers finds the guy that he likes right, and I was trusts, s- and then he goes to that player. Rodgers seemed frustrated with EQ a yeah. couple of times this last week. I, I I'm not really in love with Brown. Okay, um, let's go ahead and move on here. Do you have any other favorites that are jumping out? I mean, it, MVS is the clear top favorite for me guys that I'm also you know decently interested in are you guys like Kiki coming off the injury and the bye week the addition of Demarius Thomas I think that he I don't even think he's back really yeah I mean he 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 said he's not coming back until he's 100 percent I don't know his practice report maybe he's practicing in full and I've missed it but yeah, I mean, I, if he doesn't come back this week coming off a bye, then I worry that it's going to be even longer. So I, I am not super excited about okay. Kiki. Well, I, actually, he's going on bye. Uh, he's, oh, even worse. Yeah, yeah I apologize. Because I, yeah, so, I, he had missed a couple weeks. Yeah, uh, you know, Traquan Smith is still a guy that I'm interested in. Okay. Uh, being the that deep receiving option for Drew Brees is usually valuable. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, all right. Uh, some other interesting names. I want to know what you think about the Williams guys. It seems like we talk about them every week. It's a bit of a guessing game. Neither of them had a significant amount of targets. Three for Tyrell, three for Mike Williams, both for the Chargers, obviously. Um, just well, three targets, but both scored. One of well, I mean, one had a ghost touchdown. One of them had a legitimate. Oh, because you're still bitter against Mike Williams. No, no, not no. <laughs> yes, very much. <laughs> referees what are you watching it's ridiculous but it, uh, I'm, I would prefer Tyrell I'm gonna take the gazelle personally uh, Mike Williams is he's a fine flex play when you're out of options what about John Ross are you guys making a move to pick him up in hopes that he can step up with the absence of AJ Green the New Orleans Saints matchup we talked Look, about by weeks this week if you're desperate Mike, you know, the break the glass players that you've brought up before. Sure. John Ross at home against New Orleans is a break the glass wideout. He he made plays in preseason. Um, I think that he, you know, when you lose A.J. Green, that is a big red zone opportunity, a big red zone target. Not that he's a prototypical red zone guy, but a touchdown or two from Andy Dalton should be expected in this game. I think you can break the glass with him and C.J. Uzama. Well, it's a deep threat, too. I mean, how often, how many times per game does A.J. Green get a sideline bomb, and that will be John Ross now. So, I, yeah. he, the problem is John Ross is, uh, no, no, he's no A.J. Green. True. Um, all right. Uh, other names that you could be interested in. Traquan Smith, 28% owned. Yeah, it, uh, Jason had mentioned him. I do. I'm still very interested in in him, even though the the volume has not been there. Reports that Des Bryant is being worked out by the Saints today. Yeah. I think that that would be a great ad for them. They're at the point now where outside of Traquan and Michael Thomas, they don't really have – like, last in years past, you had that goal line, Jimmy Graham line them up outside opportunity. That seems like the one crucial role that you could almost use Des for – they're not getting nothing out of their number three guy. Yeah, Cam Meredith has been a disappointment to them. So I, it, it makes sense that they would look at that. I think Dez should go to the Lions personally. Go be a big slot man up in Detroit. The Lions are a, they're on the way down. Yeah, well, but, I, I, but yes, I, yes, I get it. I, I doubt mean, the Lions are going to spend money. They just shipped out Golden Tate in part to save money. Yeah. Uh, how about Maurice Harris? Are you guys interested in yes. Maurice Harris? Because I, I am. Yes, I am. I am as well. Well, I mean, this was a 
That is a washing. That is the wide receiver <laughs> yeah, I for the you Washington Redskins. He, he get, looked really, really good. He he has looked good this year. I mean, on very, very low volume, of course. But this this week, you knew that someone was going to have a a at least someone should have a good game for Alex Smith, and that was Harris. Ten for one twenty four. Had the twelve targets. Gets to play Tampa Bay. Uh, he's running it primarily as a slot guy for them. Crowder's been banged up. Paul Richardson's out for the year. Josh Doxson is good for his three super ridiculous catches of the of the week. But can Harris step into the role and be the actual number one for this team? I think it's plausible. Would you rather start Maurice Harris at Tampa Bay, you know, right. or John Ross? Because that's it all this, depends this on whether like, wow. Jamison Crowder comes back for this game or not. Agreed. If Crowder's out, I'm very I'm comfortable playing Harris. He had ten targets. I'm sorry, twelve targets, ten receptions. If Crowder comes back and bounces Harris from the slot, I would start Ross. Okay. Yeah, I think I lean that way. But if if Crowder is out, Harris is extremely interesting this week. So you'd put your waiver claim on which one, not knowing, because I would lean towards Harris. I would I would prioritize. Ross, personally. Okay. But just because I, I know that A.J. Green is going to miss a couple games. I'm not sure what's going on with Crowder. Are you interested in chasing points with Curtis Samuel? No. No. Are you interested in Anthony Miller? Five yes. for 49 on six targets, rookie wide receiver for the Chicago Bears. I am interested in Anthony Miller. He's looked good, and uh, we I haven't heard any update on Allen Robinson, but it does not seem like he's, you know, just uh, – he was almost out there. It seems like he was – not almost, not close to being there last week. So if if A Rob is out against Detroit this week, I like Anthony Miller quite a bit. All right, uh, are you interested in Cordero Patterson after the rushing? Only if Sony is out. Yeah, but, obviously. But by all accounts, it sounds like Sony's going to be back. Okay. All right. Um, all right. Cool. Let's jump into uh, running backs. Before we do that, I want to thank Twenty Three and Me. Look, as the loved ones get together this Thanksgiving, you can discover more about your genetic connections that you share with 23andMe. Here's how simple it is. Uh, 23andMe sends you a kit. You spit into the tube. Mm -hmm. I've done it. That's the sound of spit. Mike, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, you register your sample to your personal account, and you receive your online report in a few weeks. Uh, I did this years ago, Jason. I think all three of us have done this. Yeah. Uh, you can discover where your DNA is from out of 150 regions worldwide, see genetic similarities and differences between you and your relatives, share your reports with your family and friends. Even if they're not customers, they can see your genetic report. And uh, now through Thanksgiving, 23andMe Ancestry Service Kits are only $49 per kit when you buy two or more. That's 50% off the regular price of $99 this holiday. Order your 23andMe Ancestry Service Kit at 23andMe.com slash footballers. That's the number 23andMe.com slash footballers. And hey, Footland, Pristine Auction is the best website that's ever existed outside of the <laughs> fantasy footballers. <laughs> if you haven't listened, if you're new, welcome to the show. Pristine Auction, we've talked about them for years. We know the people over there. They run an amazing, amazing site to hook you up with signed, authentic uh, signatures uh, that are fully legit. You, you know you're getting an incredible piece of memorabilia. And because it's an auction, you can just steal these things practically. I was looking at what went yesterday. Michael Thomas signed jersey, Tyree Kill signed jersey, Devontae Adams signed jersey, all won yesterday less than $90 for all three. Uh, it, it's, really, it's really an unbelievable website. You got Christmas coming up. <clears throat> you have huge fantasy football victories you want to celebrate. You want to deck out your new place to watch you know, games, your, your office, wherever. You've got to check it out. Go to Pristine Auction, make a completely free account, bid on stuff. You only have to pay if you win. Check it out. It's P-R-I-S-T-I-N-E auction.com. Free account. Tell them that you found them from the Fantasy Football Podcast. All right, running backs, guys. Who are some of your favorites from the main waiver wire pickups? And these are names like Duke Johnson, right? The big week, nine for 78 
and two touchdowns through the air. Mike Davis with Chris Carson banged up. Mike Davis went out, caught seven passes, had 15 carries. Uh, big week for him. Elijah McGuire, surprising snap count, 55% of the snaps. Whoa! Seven for 30 on the ground, but three for 37 through the air. Maybe filling in for Bilal Pal there. And then there are other names. Jalen Richard, Doug Martin, Royce Freeman could be back soon. Who's your favorite pickup? My, Where my, are you spending your fab? Where are you blowing your waiver priority? Unlike some weeks, this week I don't feel like there's a guy that is a, a just a, oh my gosh, you have to have this guy rest I of the agree. season, which means I'm looking at this week. I'm not looking rest of season. I'm saying, who do I need to pick up to play on my bye? And to me, it's Duke Johnson. I love the matchup against Atlanta for pass catching running backs. I said this last week. Duke Johnson is a guy that I'm happy to play this week. I mean, he's not just a, a break the glass uh, and, and you can play him off the waivers. Yeah, this he's is, a good play this This is a week. guy where when, when he's on your roster already, if he's not available, if you've already picked him up, he's probably someone you should consider putting in that, that flex this week. Yeah, and then would you – just real quick question. Since you like the matchup for Duke Johnson, um, I believe the Packers face Miami this week. If you're blowing a waiver spot, are you prioritizing Marquez Valdez Scantling or Duke Johnson? Yeah, I, I mean, obviously it's a little roster dependent because you're talking about two different positions. So I would prioritize if you need a running back, then you got to do what you got to do. What but if you need neither, but if you, you want to add depth I to your team, I would much rather have Marquez. I agree. Okay. I agree. Yeah. And then the other running backs, uh, Elijah McGuire is very interesting. He's. Uh, like I said in the Rising Star segment, I don't think that he is going to just win you weeks, but I think he will be a reliable source, especially in half and full point PPR, of getting you that 8 to 10 point a week baseline. And then Mike Davis is extremely interesting, but that all depends on the health of Chris Carson, who missed basically the second half of this week. Peach, uh, Peach Cobbler. Peach Cobbler himself. Uh, Coach Pete Carroll <laughs> said uh, about Chris Carson, he's sore. He's not going to do much at practice this week. So this is a – you pick him up and you're not sure that you're going to be able to play him. If you have Chris Carson, I would prioritize picking up Mike Davis. I mean, we're in – we're in handcuff season, so you should be protecting There's yourself. There's a pretty interesting dynamic there with Mike Davis, Duke Johnson. Now, Duke Johnson's 48% owned, so he might not even be available in your league. Mike Davis, much uh, much less owned. But yeah. but Mike Davis represents this volume, right? Right. Whereas Duke represents the passing game and maybe some opportunity well, in a Davis, good matchup. Davis was 7 for 45 on eight targets. If, if Chris Carson is actually out... Davis is I, then a Davis, start. Then Davis will still get targets and carries on yeah. the ground. So that would be 20-plus 20, 20 touches probably. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, if if Carson's out and we're just going head-to-head, -head, then Mike Davis is going to be higher in the rankings for me than Duke. All right, you've had time to uh, think about this, Andy. <clears throat> How, I what, have? <clears throat> yes, what is your temperature <laughs> check on Josh Adams? Are you still wanting to pick him up and believing that he is going to be – a successful fantasy option in that committee. That's the running back Philadelphia Eagles rookie. Yes. Uh, Josh Adams is the best of that group. Now, whether that means, um, you know, that's going to be, I, I don't know if I'd start him this week, but I think he's going to win out in that role. I think he's going to be the guy that has the most opportunity. You know, Doug Peterson came out and talked about the fact that he's going to be the, Le the LeGarrette Blunt of that offense. He's got more size. He's got more juice. Then Clement, then Smallwood. Smallwood's a jag. Clement has a role. But, yeah, I think Josh Adams is the one I'd want to own, and I think he's a great opportunity to pick him up uh, right now because of coming off the bye. Okay. I See, I, I worry about upside there for any of them, for whether it's Smallwood, Corey Clement, or uh, or Josh Adams. Just Even when Jay Ajayi was there, I'd owners have, weren't always happy because it's like, ah, he's just – he is one-third. They were – Pretty happy with Blunt last year. And the thing is, is I'd rather debate the merits of the of those guys becoming something on good offenses than I would, you know, the Derrick Henry, Deion Lewis situation. Like, I want to buy into the Aaron Joneses and Josh Adams and find my gold there. And maybe it won't be. Maybe it'll be too much of a committee. But if I'm 
able to grab well, a guy for take, free? Yeah, I mean, you'd still take Deion Lewis over. Josh Adams? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I would do that. Okay. Yeah. Um, any other favorites this week? Jalen Rashard could still be out there. Yes, I would pick him up. Doug Martin? Uh, this is a good... He's, he's going to get... He's going to get touches, and he's going to get goal line work. Uh, he plays the Chargers, which probably not the best matchup for Doug Martin. However, the following week, he will get to play Arizona, and Doug Martin will be a very, very serviceable running yeah. back in that matchup. Are you, maybe. Maybe. We no, have, he, he no we, have to, we have to wait one more week and see because the, the Cardinals changed to the 4-3 and shut down. Fair so point. If, I, yes, if that scheme fair. did actually change – uh, how they were losing uh, to the running back, which on one week it looked like it did, but it was right. it, it was the Niners. This is the week now that we're by. We're, obviously, you still have bye weeks, but we're past the week nine by apocalypse. Now is the time where I would start looking at handcuffs as well at running okay. back. So if you, you know, if you've got Kareem Hunt, make sure you pick up Spencer Ware. If you've got Gurley, get Malcolm Brown. Those, those situations. There's there's not a lot where you know the guy to get, but now's the time. Would you pick up, or I should say, are you interested in Theo Riddick? Uh, he was on the field r right back into his usual role. Eight targets. He, it only came through with seven for 36, but if you're in a PPR, that you're happy with that. Golden Tate is gone. I mean, Theo Riddick saw he was lining up in the slot a few times. He's out there running routes. Are you interested in him? Let's. And I'll speak only specifically for PPR. Yeah, leagues. only for PPR okay. leagues, and I would be mildly interested. Right. Also, another handcuff that I uh, we haven't really talked about, but I think he's one of the most valuable handcuffs out there. If you have Christian McCaffrey, you need to own C.J. Anderson hmm. because should an injury happen, North Turner is a workhorse guy. C.J. Anderson is more talented than Spencer Ware or Chase Edmonds or Malcolm really? Brown. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh. I don't think he's more talented than any of those guys. <laughs> I think he is. <laughs> That's why I was shocked. Well, I think he is. Certainly not more talented he's than, like. He's a thousand-yard rusher last season. You don't get to, Im like, take his great years and give them to him for the rest it's of his career. Years, it was not years, though. That was last year. Yeah, it was, it was, was very coming recent. into this season. And the, the thing is, is he's not, not on the field because of his talent. North Turner, this is what I was saying before the season, Christian McCaffrey was going to be used as a workhorse back because that's all Norv Turner has ever done for 26 years. Should an injury befall Christian McCaffrey, C.J. Anderson will be a fantasy football star. I think he becomes very valuable. And also, don't forget about Gio Bernard. He's back at practice. If Joe Mixon misses time, then Gio Bernard is extremely valuable. Oh, no. That's, <laughs> that's terrible news. Sorry, He's Mark. Back. Oh. Wow. Right. We haven't heard from Mark Waltenberg in a long well, time. I haven't done nothing, man. <laughs> I've been out there trying to be like, hey, coach, put me in. He's like, nah, you're not good. And I'm like, that hurts my feelings, yo. Say hi to your mother for me. Yo? That hurts my feelings, yo? I don't know. It's not me. That's Mark Waltenberg. <laughs> it's been a while. Um, tight ends. If you're facing the Gronk situation, um, maybe you're facing the Jordan Reed situation, which I'm advising people at this point – Look, move on. I mean, I'd rather, I'd rather have Jack Doyle. That was the question oh, I got. Oh, 100%. Than Jordan Reed. And look, this is the time to go grab somebody if you are in a tough situation. And, and you can't chase Jeff Hireman's points. They're on by in Denver. So CJ Uzama, Jack Doyle, Nick Vanette, Chris Herndon. Herndon Herndon's been very interesting. Four consecutive weeks of increased utilization um, he's always looked at around the goal line when it when four they for get, 62 this past week, which was nice. Yeah. When they get around the goal line, Her Herndon has been looked to, but the first two guys you mentioned are the clear cut winners to me. If you're yes. asking who are my favorites, CJ Uzama against new Orleans without AJ green, his utilization should go up. But Jack Doyle, I would have even ahead of him coming off the, well. uh, off the bye week. He'll be available in a lot of leagues. Looks like he's only 38% owned in ESPN. So Jack Doyle is going to be out there. I love, you know, getting pieces of a great quarterback, uh, you know, and, and Andrew Luck has been awesome this year. Yeah, it's if you are facing the tight end problem, this is kind of a lucky week to have that happen with two really great options. Are you are we buying into Nick Vanette 
had eight targets. He ran more than double the routes of Red Dead Dixon, Jason. Uh, I stand on principle. I he, uh, will not be picking he's, up. He's he's playing against <laughs> the Rams, who we've seen the way that they we call that the quote funnel defense, where things can just roll through the tight end. Old man, old man strength. Ben Watson came through with a big game against the Rams. Are we buying into Vanette? I, I I'm okay with it. Okay. Because uh, we we saw obviously old Will Disley do some work earlier in the season. And when you look at the target counts that the wideouts are getting, Doug Baldwin, it's like four targets. Uh, Tyler Lockett is like four, four targets. targets. Uh, Nick Vanette had eight targets. So uh, I think he's interesting. Those are Red Dead's targets. With Russell, <laughs> come on. So Okay, so this week you can play Nick Vanette against the Rams, Chris Herndon against Buffalo, or Ben Watson against the Bengals. Which of those three, hmm. how would you prioritize? I would genuinely order them Ben Watson – Chris Herndon, Nick Bennett. I actually would as well. Hmm. I'm going to go with the better, the best offense. Ben Watson looked nice. Uh, Chris Herndon on the upward trajectory, and then Nick. Vanette. I'm just. I'm. I would go. Watson is my number one of those three. I'm concerned for Herndon because the Buffalo's defense is not terrible, and Sam Darnold has been a turnover machine. I mean, I, the nice, This game is going to be the nice. It's going to be special. Her, the, yeah, the nice thing about Herndon is. They will, because of Buffalo, and more so because of Buffalo's offense, there will be short fields. So I think that's really valuable for a guy like Darnold. For him to get touchdowns, he, he needs a shorter field right now at this point right. in his rookie career. And uh, Hernan's looked at near the goal line. So I, I think they'll have a, a couple more red zone opportunities than they, than they had last week for sure. Hernan's been at eight or more fantasy points for four straight weeks. Sure. It's, he's interesting. Yeah, it's interesting. But in just in, if you're looking for long term value, he's playing Buffalo this week, and then he's on bye. Right. So you is a if you're saying, "Oh crap, I need a guy for a few weeks," I would prioritize the other guys with Uzama, Doyle, Ben Watson, all right. ahead of him. Hopefully, right. you don't need Herndon. Um, what defenses are you looking to stream? The Jets. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the Jets and uh, and even Buffalo. Uh, the, they play each other. Yeah. That's, <laughs> there's gonna there's gonna be defensive scoring, but if if they are not available, the Jets have forced 21 sacks and 15 turnovers on the season, which is great. Yes, and they go up against a team that says you don't have to force us; we'll we'll do it ourselves. Right. And then the Chargers get to play the Raiders. That's going to be a very solid play. The Eagles coming off of the bye week, maybe you can snatch them up and play them against Dallas, and then. Green Bay versus Miami. I'm I'm okay with that as well. All right, let's get into the quarterbacks. Full stream ahead. All right, who's your streamer this week, Mike? I'm going with Baker. Uh if if he is available and we've got him down as a 38% owned guy. He gets to play Atlanta. I know that the the Atlanta defense God, they showed up, so to speak, against Washington. Alex Smith did have over 300 yards. He just didn't come through with that second touchdown. That would have put him over the top to be a great quarterback play. So I, I like Baker against the, the Falcons. Jason, I'm going with the guy that was. I'm terrified of yours. Oh, uh, I, I think I, it's. I, I like I, it. I, I might it. overtly oppose it. Oh, but we'll see. By by all means, try. I'm going with the guy that was benched two weeks ago, and he's got. A snake. I got a snake, man. Blake the snake. Blake is overtly rooted against by everyone every single week, including, including his, his own team. team. <laughs> yeah, it's really true. So you're you're out there going, Jason, what are you doing? This guy was bench mid game, put up two fantasy points two weeks ago. How in the world can you stream Blake the snake? Here's how. It's a combination of a couple of – You click the button. <laughs> a couple of great you things. You put him in your lineup and he you click save. He's on pace for 522 rushing yards. He, he and, and that's with being benched and basically not playing two weeks ago. Uh, he's coming off the bye. I think the rushing baseline helps him enough. He's actually had several games this year where he's been very good. For fantasy, look, he's, he's never been a great real-world quarterback, but in fantasy, he's always been fine. He's playing. He has not in, always been fine. Oh yes, he has since his <laughs> rook, 
since his I'm not end as of, a streamer end of season end yeah. of season rankings he's averaged the quarterback eight over the last three years with last year being his worst year as quarterback thirteen. It's official. I'm going to overtly oppose it this week. Eight turnovers over yeah. the last four weeks. What do you think? Three of, touchdowns over the last four it's weeks. Also, what do you think of Derek Carr? Points, what do you think of 14 Derek Carr? Fourteen points, ten a points. Andy, what do you think of Derek Carr? Uh, good or bad? That Raiders offense, good or bad? Bad. Okay, how, how about 244 yards, three touchdowns? That's what Derek Carr yeah. did against the Indianapolis defense. Oh, could. I understand. It's not a question of whether he could do it. It's a question of, of whether it's a why question. Why stream a guy who's struggling this immensely? Eight turnovers to three touchdowns over a four-week span. As a great desperate question. times no, go for desperate Not desperate measures. times. That's a great question. Yes, the reason do. I chose, because we, we have to do that in fantasy, go, why? Because we're going to get things wrong. But what is the reason for the decision? I'm going with Blake the Snake, specifically over Andy Dalton, because Ooh. not because he's safer, but because he has the ability, I think, to have that thirty-point game, if you know, if if Andy, if if uh, Andrew Luck is scoring and and they've got to use him and he's running the ball, we just see big fantasy games from time to time out of Blake Bortles and. Uh, I will water I like bet you Andy Dalton versus Blake Bortles if All you right, want. Let's do it. Woo! Water bet. Look, uh, we're we're not um, we're not yes men on this show. We don't always agree no. with each other. I don't. I think the upside. Of Andy Dalton's higher at home. This game's on the road. Derek Carr was at home against Indianapolis. I like that. I also think there's a massive, massive difference between the Raiders' defense and the Jaguars' defense. So the logic of Andrew Luck's putting up a bunch of points against them doesn't make sense to me. Jack's Nothing defense makes been, sense to me. It, yeah. Uh, it, it also, we're talking about streamers here. Andy Dalton is not available to stream. Uh, yeah, uh, he is. Yeah, he is. He is dr he'll be dropped. He's... He was almost my streamer this week. He's available in forty percent, less than forty percent of leagues. I mean, okay. to me, that's not a streaming candidate. All right, all right. I, so you're you're firmly in the let's go with the guy. Eight turnovers, three touchdowns in let's, the last four weeks. Yeah, let's go against the 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 defense that just allows top quarterback performances. And if unless your name is Nathan or uh, not Nathan Peterman, uh, Derek Anderson. That's overemphasizing the matchup to me. But that's because what it's all about, man. It hasn't worked out for Blake for four straight weeks. Why Why jump in that fire? All right. I'm, I'm with it, though. I'm with it. Okay. Uh, my streamer this week is actually Marcus Mariota. He had 30 fantasy points last night, 10 rushing attempts. He faces New England at home. The offense looked like it had a little bit of life to it. And New England is actually 27th against opposing quarterbacks in terms of fantasy points against. So there's a lot of upside for Mariota. There's also a pretty high floor with New England giving up that many points to opposing quarterbacks. And ultimately, I wouldn't be going there if they were on the road, despite those numbers up in uh, New England. But at home, Mariota, after the win, put up 28 points last night. I'm going to go with Mariota as a streaming option. And the nice thing about Mariota is he's probably available in your league. So I don't yeah. know. You know, Kirk Cousins, Deshaun Watson, if you're an owner of those two guys on by, you can look at Mariota Baker, Blake the Snake, uh, there are some other guys out there, but those are kind of the ones we picked out for this week. Yes. Um, Before we close out the show, I want to give a shout out to uh, Tim on Twitter. He sent me the, the dictionary.com word of the day. I've never heard this. Mm. The dictionary.com word of the day is dopester. Dopester. Dopester, who a person who undertakes to predict the outcome of elections, sporting events, or other contests that hold public interest. You're telling me I'm so a dopester? By definition, we are dopesters. Oh, that's pretty dopester. <laughs> <laughs> um Wow. That I feel thanks, special. Thanks, Tim. So if in other words, when we introduce our profession to our like our grandmother and like those yeah. people that don't understand what we do. We Professional should just go, dopester. Just go with dopester. I'm a dopester. Yeah. yeah. Well, especially grandma, Ma, she would, she'd get it. I'm she, a, do I'm a dopester fire. <laughs> <laughs> dopester fire. Yeah. All right. That is it guys. Uh, we've got, uh, well, we've got an exciting week 10 coming up. I'm, I'm ready to get into the matchups. We'll have a segment tomorrow. Are we doing playoff stuff tomorrow, bro? Absolutely. Awesome. Going to talk some playoffs and check out draft.com slash ballers for all your daily needs. See you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.